<laughs> Wait, I didn't know you. I'm sorry. You you take people for joy rides? Yeah, I'm actually. We do aerobatic thrower flights. Uh, I'm an aerobatic instructor for the the my company here, what I, what I teach. So, part of what I do is actually taking pilots up and teaching them to do advanced uh, maneuvers with the airplane for for safety, not just to be like an air show pilot, yeah. not for stunts, but yeah. And we'll yeah. take it, roll the airplane upside down, do loops, rolls, you know, all the fun stuff. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. Not just to dodge UFOs or anything like that. No, no, you know, I, you know, I, I have to say I liked your intro there, uh, but unfortunately, Iowa must be like the one place that UFOs don't visit. I, I don't know anybody in Iowa that's seen a UFO like in Iowa. It's everywhere else, but really, us. we're just a we're just a really boring state or something. I don't know. Wow, so. <laughs> that's that's really well. Well, okay, so you have you have never seen one. What uh, what what about you, Dale? You ever seen anything funny? Yeah, I've been waiting for this question. Oh, I gotta ask. I mean, it's okay. Well, okay, no, 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 let me, no, 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 no. Let me, let me give the disclaimer first, and that is, I am a huge believer. I was not, you know, I had never seen anything that was really weird in the skies, and then I watched that. You know, some people already know this story. I had watched or some video where a British guy at the very end of the video, the, 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 the it was a general conspiracy stuff, aliens, and I wasn't really that excited about the whole thing. But he gets to the end. He goes, he goes, you want to see something interesting? Get yourself a pair of night vision. Yeah, goggles it, yeah it, exactly and start looking up and i'm just going oh, right on i am totally going to do that so i you know i I thousand dollars and if you hit light they're destroyed well you can get them cheaper than that i mean you can get gen ones for i don't know 400 bucks but still and, you hit light and it, well yeah you got to be careful yeah you don't want to you're absolutely right though yeah you don't want to fry them and i was very very careful about these things because yeah they're not they're, it's not like they're binoculars they're all the basic, things you'll see with those would just like make flat earth seem like kindergarten. Well, no, 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 not at all. Um, I but I looked at these things because they'd fl- these things fly. The, at least the things I saw uh, flew up so high. You know, they were at least eighty, hundred thousand feet. That and and they were they were silent and they were you know they were moving in all sorts of different directions. But what I was going to get at was when I was looking at them the first night because I, I you know it, it's really not to use a cliche but it's night and day you put these things on you're looking up there and the, fr- and the first thing you, you see is is the sky there's so many things moving up there and you're going tons, no, tons of stuff I was going um, well, well it's not like I go I, I first the first comment is like wow there's a lot of damn satellites up there mm-hmm. I, that's a lot of satellites and, and and I had heard rumors that there was a bunch of satellites I was going okay and then I'm I'm getting bored pretty quick I was going they're okay not satellites. Yeah, they're not satellites. I'm looking. I'm going to watch this satellite, supposedly, just slow down and stop. And then it just sits there like it's lost. And then it just makes kind of a slow left-hand turn and then picks up speed really fast and goes ballistic. And then, I mean, like out of sight, all without a a single sound. I mean, there was a couple of flashes here and there, but you couldn't see it with the naked eye. And this no, happened. Yeah. This happened all the time. And I was going, I was going. Okay, so what exactly am I looking at? So now the answer, and I know people uh, think I'm being a smartass when I do it. When they say, "Oh, well, you know, flat Earth. What about satellites?" I go, "Really? Who told you they were satellites? Who? Wh- what exactly makes you think they're satellites? Just because somebody said, oh, yeah, by the way, we got satellites up there. You're buying it. It's like, well, we see lights in the sky.' I go, "Yeah, you've seen something, but I don't. Whatever I've seen, cert- certainly aren't satellites, and they aren't us. They don't act like satellites." With so, so, so anyway, do you do you believe you know? Give me give me your take on it. You, you can say you know pass if you want if you don't want to. Well, before know. I forget, though, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but I, was, I meant to look this up because I, I knew this was going to come up. Um, he he has the the expense of three thousand dollars, you know, binoculars, and he yeah. shines uh, a beam in the sky, some type of. Oh, oh I know which guy you're talking about. Yeah, and and it attracts these things. Thank you. <laughs> things. <laughs> these objects. And not only that, um, no, just, I mean, oh boy, um, I gotta think here for a minute how to say this. Cause I'm, it's all right. Take your time. I, I don't want to cross the line. Um, well, when I'm sorry, when what, is this a military matter that you don't want to? Well, the, this this guy will show um, beings <clears throat> on the ground that are not necessarily oh. that you would see with your normal eyes. Oh, I got you. Oh, you mean uh, so if you take your night vision and focus it on the Yeah, and then he, you know, and then he, these um, basically things come in that look like aircraft and, you know, they're, they're uh, here, l- let me give you a parable. It's kind of like, um, I'm trying to think of one. If you're going hunting and somebody's looking for a deer. Yeah. And these things are like scouting for stuff. And then they find something and then they go do their thing. Oh, I got you. Recon. 
Yeah, and recon. You're, you're seeing those through the night vision or on the scope? Yeah, you can see with night vision, no problem. It's easy. Oh, oh my God, it's ridiculous. Are you, were you referencing any of these with the scope at the same time by any chance? Um, okay, well, I'll go there. <laughs> you might as well. <laughs> Just, we're going down that road. Um... Because well, these things can't sometimes yeah, – I'm just giving – you know some of this. Sometimes they can be picked up radar and sometimes they can't. Yeah, well, my, my, my understanding is they can't, which is, just blew my mind when we had one instant. Yeah. Um, again, bored late at night. seems like where all these stories begin. <laughs> the uh, approach – it was only three of us in the radar room, the approach controller and, and two of us. And – just by weird coincidence, we were all we were all looking at the approach controller's uh, scope, and this thing went flying across across the uh, scope. It's hard for me to talk about this. Um, the scope, oh. and it was two football fields wide and two fi- football fields long, and the radar signature was that of an aircraft identing. Now, Jonathan might be able to go into more details. Wait, nineteen ninety three. So it's like. Talk about air traffic control stuff, but ident makes basically when an aircraft wait, wait. you had a foot you had a foot thing of those two football fields wide by long that idented on your radar. Yeah, what's idented? Somebody what? tell me. Okay, that's that's basically so to to confirm contact with the target, the air traffic controller will ask the pilot to ident, and basically on that transponder box that I was talking about earlier. There's an ident button. We push the ident button, and it and it actually makes the transponder instantaneously send out a signal, basically light up and flash up, so that it, it on the controller's screen that pilots or that aircraft will light up compared to everyone else, so he knows that that's you. Does that make sense? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this thing actually. This thing said, "Oh yeah, yeah." You've sold, well, I'm sold. not saying I'm not saying it was identing. I'm saying it. it the radar it was, signature was so bright. Yeah, that it, it was, was equivalent. as if it was, it wasn't squawking. Or oh, thank God, you scared me for a while. <laughs> yeah. um, but the radar signature was just so bright, it was, the illumination was three times of an ident. Wow. Oh, geez. And it, and you know, the scope um, was set to 100 miles, and so it covered 100 miles in the blink of an eye, which puts it around 400,000 miles per hour. Wow, four hundred thousand? No, four thousand. Do the math. Blink of an eye. And how big was the scope? Hundred miles. Good lord. I did the math. I am. I could be wrong. Well, no. I mean, if if hundred miles in a fraction of a second. Yeah. Yeah. That would so, be extremely fast. Yeah, like four hundred thousand miles per hour. Wow. Well, it could have engaged whatever. Um, uh, I like to call them the 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 unified field engines at that point. Because uh, we're in, if anyone doesn't know what a unified field engine is, that's the the mythical or legendary, whatever you want to call it, uh, engine that supposedly powers these things, which is the balanced equation between gravitational waves and electromagnetic waves. Uh, and the theory behind that is, and supposedly Einstein knew, but he was never going to give it up to the military because he saw what they did with atomic weapons was that if you could balance the equation between electromagnetic and gravitational waves, you can create an aircraft or whatever you want to call it, an aircraft as good as anything, but it would work underwater and just about anywhere else, mm-hmm. that, uh, that could travel at all, almost unbelievable speeds with uh, extremely fast acceleration and no G-forces to, to, to speak of. But, but this reminds me, because you were talking about something that was that big and that wide. Uh, I'm sorry, that long and that wide. And that reminds me of, uh, if anyone knows about this one, is the, uh, the 1986 uh, Japan cargo plane incident. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, if anyone hasn't heard about that one, you guys have. But on the air, where uh, this Japan Japan cargo plane was—I can't believe you went public with it. Well, that's yeah. Yeah, that's what sunk him. And and of course, the picture they use of him was so flattering. You know, <laughs> he's got that crazy eye, and he's kind of showing you know with his hands how oh, the plane they t- make him all look crazy. Oh yeah, but but there was this uh, 747 cargo plane flying uh, you know back to the states, and it was going by Alaska. And he had a giant, you know, what was it, 600 feet by 600 feet, like a walnut-shaped aircraft. He said it was several times bigger than an aircraft carrier that seemed to have some interest in him and was tailing him. And so, you know, he got a little bit concerned because that he was it was much bigger than a 747, which, you know, was the flagship of the day. 
And uh, he decided to, to call the Air Force base ahead, and so they had him do, and they said, yeah, we absolutely see this thing on radar. So here, do a couple of maneuvers. So they had him do, you'll have to forgive me uh, if I butcher this, uh, like a couple slow circles, either left hand, either clockwise or counterclockwise, to see if he could lose them. You know, like either they would go by or would follow him, and it followed him uh, to the point where the, he couldn't he couldn't ditch him, obviously. So eventually he just they, – they were going to scramble jets and he goes, look, I'll, I'm just going to keep on my approach and eventually the thing veered off and, uh, and left. But yeah, when he hit the ground, of course, he was so excited that he told the press and that was it. He had a desk job for the rest of his very short career. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, uh, he didn't get to uh, – and, and I, I reference him when I said that you would be better off talking about uh, – having, having that when, I, when I said that in the clues – when I said, if, if you think that, that talking about uh, flat earth is bad, it's, it's worse than going to your boss and saying that you had a UFO follow you for several hours and when you landed and, and making an official report about it. That, that's how bad it is. If you go, if you go to your boss mm-hmm. from a, you know, if you're a professional pilot and you go to your boss and say, oh, yeah, by the way, I think the maps are wrong because I think the earth is flat, uh, you know, they'll, they'll send you in for counseling. Yes. Yep. That point. So anyway, sorry, I, 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 I completely digress. So this thing, this, oh, this- let me, before I forget. So, um, when this happened, the, uh, the approach controller turned around, who was also the f- facility watch supervisor. She's in charge of the whole facility. Yeah. She turns around her, her you know, part of the expression, mouth to the floor, eyes wide open. She goes, did you see that? <laughs> 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 and my, you know, I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a low low ranking guy at this time, and I looked at the guy next to him. We both looked at each other, and we looked at her, and we said, "Yeah." <laughs> and that was the end of it. 